The Battle of Masaka was a battle of the Uganda-Tanzania War that took place from 23 February to 24 February 1979 in the town of Masaka, Uganda. Following an artillery bombardment, most of the Ugandan government forces fled and Tanzanian and Ugandan rebel forces captured the town. Colonel E.D. Amin had seized power in a military coup in Uganda in 1971, and established a brutal dictatorship. Seven years later he attempted to invade Tanzania to the south. Ugandan troops occupied the Kagera salient and subsequently murdered local civilians and destroyed property. The attack was eventually repulsed, and Tanzanian President Julius Nyerere, Unsatisfied with Amin's refusal to renounce his claims to Tanzanian territory and the international community's failure to strongly condemn the invasion, ordered his forces to advance into southern Uganda with the aim of capturing the towns of Masaka and Murara. After careful planning, the Tanzania People's Defense Force crossed the border in January 1979, and moved steadily northward. Masaka was garrisoned by up to several thousand Ugandan troops, including the Suicide Battalion. Their performance was undermined by low morale and internal divisions. The TPDF surrounded the town on three sides and on 23 February, after beating off several harassing Ugandan probes, initiated an artillery barrage, concentrating on the Suicide Battalion's barracks. Several Ugandan units withdrew to Lukaya, leaving the Suicide Battalion alone to defend Masaka. The TPDF's 201st and 208th Brigades attacked at dawn. A battalion of Ugandan rebels and the 207th Brigade, bolstered by a tank squadron, also moved in on the town. The suicide battalion withdrew towards the village of Villa Maria, and, aside from opposition at Kajjagawa camp, the TPDF seized the town with minimal resistance. As revenge for the damage wrought by the Ugandans in Kagera, the TPDF raised much of Masaka. The loss of the town greatly hurt the morale of the Ugandan forces and troubled Ugandan commanders. Amin ordered a counter-attack which was defeated in Lukaya. His promise to exact revenge on the local civilians for welcoming the invasion partly contributed to Nyeria's decision to attack Kampala. Much of Masaka was later rebuilt. Chapter 1 – Background In 1971 Colonel Idi Amin launched a military coup that overthrew the President of Uganda, Milton Obote, precipitating a deterioration of relations with the neighboring state of Tanzania. Amin installed himself as President and ruled the country under a repressive dictatorship. In October 1978 he launched an invasion of Tanzania. On 1 November he announced the annexation of the Kagera salient, an 1,800 square kilometer strip of land between the Ugandan border and the Kagera River. Ugandan troops subsequently pillaged the area they occupied, murdering civilians, stealing cattle, and destroying property, triggering the flight of 40,000 inhabitants, southward. Tanzania eventually halted the assault, mobilized anti armin opposition groups, and launched a counter-offensive. In January 1979 the Tanzania People's Defense Force seized the Ugandan border town of Mutukula to counter any further threats to Kagera. The TPDF bulldozed homes in the locale and murdered local civilians to avenge the destruction in Kagera. Deeply disturbed by the event, Nyeria subsequently instructed his troops to refrain from harming civilian life and property. Though many international actors were sympathetic with the Tanzanian position, numerous African states and the Organization of African Unity strongly encouraged Tanzanian President Julius Nyeria to exercise restraint and not act beyond defending his territory. He had originally not intended to expand the war but with Amin refusing to renounce his claims to Tanzanian territory and the IA's criticism of the Kagera invasion being muted, he decided that Tanzanian forces should occupy southern Uganda. Chapter 2 – Prelude The two major towns in southern Uganda were Masaka and Murara. The former was the third largest inhabited place in the country, and the site of the southern headquarters for the Uganda army. The Tanzanians decided to seize them as revenge for the devastation wrought by Ugandan troops in their country and in order to incite a rebellion. 
Abote assured Nyeria that if the locales were taken a mass uprising would take place against Amin's regime, deposing it in a few weeks and allowing the Tanzanians to exit the war. Abote was also certain that the Uganda army would disintegrate if Masaka were captured. The Tanzanians began careful planning for an offensive on the two towns. Major General David Musuguri was appointed commander of the TPDF's 20th Division and tasked with overseeing the advance into Uganda. It was originally hoped that the Ugandan rebels could spearhead the attack, but there were only about 1,000 of them, so the Tanzanians had to lead the operation. Between the TPDF's positions and Masaka was a series of locations occupied by Ugandan troops that needed to be cleared out, including an airstrip and various artillery batteries. The 201st, 207th, and 208th Brigades were ordered to clear the way. They steadily advanced, killing dozens of Ugandan soldiers, destroying large amounts of their materiel, and seizing the airstrip on 13 February. Meanwhile, Amin claimed that Tanzanian forces and mercenaries had seized a large portion of Ugandan territory. Facing questions from the international community, Tanzania insisted that its troops had only occupied land just over the Ugandan border. Tanzanian diplomats repeated Nyeria's proclamation that Tanzania does not desire an inch of Ugandan territory but evaded more specific questions about their troops' movements. After 24 Tanzanians were killed in an ambush at Lake Nokivale, the TPDF slowed its offensive. They dislodged the garrison of Kalasizo, a town 28 kilometers south of Masaka, inflicting heavy casualties. The Ugandans that retreated to Masaka were in a panicked state and demoralized the troops stationed there. Anticipating conflict, most of the civilian population, including the mayor, fled the town. The civilians mostly left out of fear of Masaka's garrison, as the Ugandan military was notorious for harassing civilians. At the recommendation of an Indian diplomat, the municipality's South Asian community evacuated. Tanzanian commanders formulated their final plan of attack for Masaka after seizing Kiziba. The exact strength of Masaka's garrison was unknown to the Tanzanians, but it was assumed at the time to number in the thousands. The garrison was commanded by Brigadier Isaac Muli Mungu and included the suicide battalion, regarded as one of the best units in the Uganda army. Nevertheless, the Ugandan military in general was lacking in discipline, and was affected by internal divisions, reducing its combat effectiveness at Masaka. Lieutenant Colonel Bernard Ruhoru, the commander of the suicide battalion, suspected that after Kalasizo's fall Masaka would be attacked. He called a meeting with his fellow officers to discuss defensive strategy. Agreeing that the town should not be abandoned, the commanders drew up plans that called for troops to occupy specific locations. The suicide battalion was to defend Masaka from the Mutukula, Marara, and Bukakata Nyendo roads and also guard the hill with the local television mast. Soldiers of the Chui Battalion and the 1st Infantry Brigade were allocated to the Kaitofu and Buala Hills. According to journalist Fokton Mugabe, the Masaka garrison also included police officers who had been drafted into the Uganda army. Chapter 3, Rattle Following their victory at Kalasizo, the Tanzanians were in a good position to continue their advance, but instead halted and regrouped. They encircled Masaka on three sides, but were ordered not to move in, as an armed meeting was convened in Nairobi in an attempt to provide mediation between the belligerents. Amin erroneously declared that Masaka had fallen on the 22nd of February. Boastful Ugandan political exiles in Nairobi repeated the claim, which was subsequently reported by the international press. Nyeria was extremely displeased when he saw the false story on the front page of Tanzania's daily news. Muliamungu saw an opportunity for a counter-attack, so his troops launched a number of probes against the Tanzanian positions on 23 February. The TPDF easily repelled the assaults, but, to the chagrin of field commanders, was not yet allowed to attack the town. Instead they set up artillery and trained their guns on Masaka. The 201st, 205th, and 207th brigades moved up to the outskirts of the town, 
while a column of rebels under Lieutenant Colonel David Oit Ojok advanced into the area. On the eve of 24 February, the TPDF initiated a large nighttime bombardment of Masaka, focusing their fire on the suicide battalion's barracks. They fired nearly 1,000 shells. The town center was also hit with Katusha Saba Saba rockets. The Ugandan troops from the barracks were not in their defensive positions by the time the barrage started, and withdrew to Boma Hill. Feeling that the hill positions offered them sufficient cover for an extension of their deployment, some of the soldiers relocated to a pineapple field in the Masaka Valley and entrenched themselves. By then serious divisions had emerged among both the rank and file and the officers about defending the town. According to Ruhoru, many soldiers felt that the entire war had been instigated by the suicide battalion and thus believed that Masaka should be solely defended by that unit. The officers of Sudanese, Congolese, and West Nile extract felt that the conflict had little impact on their places of origin and were not committed to a battle. Partly as a result of the internal tensions, the 1st Infantry Brigade and the Chui Battalion promptly withdrew to Lukaya. At Musuguri's direction, the TPDF's 201st and 208th Brigades attacked at dawn. Their assault focused on Kaitofu, Nyendo, and the Pineapple Field, before concentrating on Makasa proper. The 207th Brigade under Brigadier John Walden, equipped with a squadron of tanks, attacked from Muchukula. Outnumbered, the suicide battalion withdrew over a marsh to the Villa Maria Road. The retreat, according to Ruhoru, devolved into a stampede as he lost control of the situation. The New York Times reporter John Danton later argued that the suicide battalion had de facto rebelled during the battle. The suicide battalion eventually took up positions on Villa Maria Hill, where it watched the Tanzanians enter Masaka. The TPDF seized the town with minimal difficulty, finding that most of the Ugandan soldiers and civilians had left. The few civilians that remained welcomed the Tanzanians as liberators. The Tanzanians encountered determined resistance at Kajjagawa camp, but were able to take it with the aid of 130mm artillery and Katusha rockets. Amin later claimed that Palestinian guerrillas aided in the defense of the town. A battalion of Ugandan rebels captured Bukulo airfield, and then destroyed the Masaka town hall and the local police station, which were being used as armories. The Tanzanians were under orders to destroy the town as revenge for the damage done by the Ugandans in Kagera, and subsequently began raising structures not damaged by the bombardment. By afternoon much of Masaka had been leveled by explosives. The Uganda Commercial Bank's local branch building was destroyed, causing the institution to run a deficit for the year, as were the Masaka District Administrative Headquarters, the Chief Magistrate's Court, the Tropicin Hotel, the Regional Governor's Offices the Post Office, the Hospital, and the Masaka Recreation Ground Facility. Various properties were looted. The 21st Battalion of the TPDF's 205th Brigade was deployed to Mbertsi to prevent any Ugandan reinforcements from arriving from Barara. Chapter 4 Aftermath According to Ruhoru, the fall of Masaka greatly hurt the morale of the Ugandan forces. He elaborated that it surprised and troubled Ugandan commanders, who felt that the defeat made Kampala, the capital, vulnerable to attack. They mobilized additional forces and began planning for a defense of the city. The day following the battle the TPDF and several dozen Ugandan rebels bombarded Marara and, after seizing it, destroyed what buildings remained with dynamite. The suicide battalion further retreated from the village of Villa Maria to the north. Other Ugandan forces retreated to Wera near Lukaya, while Brigadier Maliamungu got lost in the bush for more than a week. Armin was enraged by the loss of Masaka, and upon hearing news of its capture during a meeting he reportedly drew a revolver and fired six shots into the ceiling. Nyeria feared the international implications of sending his troops far into Uganda, and the destruction of Masaka. Wishing to provide cover for the TPDF's actions and possibly incite a revolt in the Uganda army, he requested a boat to pen a document supposedly written by the soldiers of the suicide battalion, 
declaring that they had mutinied and taken Masaka away from Amin's control on their own. Abote complied, and Tanzanian Presidential Press Secretary Sami Mday was instructed to covertly publish it. Mday wired it from his office in Dar es Salaam to Nairobi, pretending that it had come from a telex machine in Uganda. The Nairobi journalists were suspicious of its authenticity, but for lack of clear news about the war published it anyway. The statement was also published in the Tanzanian press. In addition to its claims about the suicide battalion's mutiny, it requested soldiers in every unit to follow our example so as to avoid further unnecessary loss of life. Though most observers did not believe it to be genuine, the forged declaration, in the context of the overall confusion and lack of public information about the war, gave the Tanzanian government means to dodge inquiries about its troops' activities in Uganda. The capture of Masaka, and Marara disrupted land and air communications across East Africa. After the former's fall the Ugandan government impounded many Rwandan trucks in the country to assist the war effort, contributing to shortages of fuel and other goods in Rwanda. Radio Uganda erroneously declared that Masaka was retaken on 28 February after intense fighting despite the public announcement by Ugandan rebels that the town was under their control. Nyeri responded by daring Amin to let international observers travel to Masaka to verify his claims. Amin did order a counterattack to retake it, and a column of Ugandan and Libyan forces was assembled for the purpose. It met advancing Tanzanian forces in Lukaya in March and was defeated. The rebels declared Masaka liberated territory, and installed Paolo Mawanga, as a provisional civilian governor of the region. According to the militant Yari Museveni, the rebels under his command recruited supporters in the Marara region, but Abote's men refrained from the doing the same in Masaka for fear that southern tribesmen would not be loyal to them, much to Mawanga's chagrin. Museveni speculated that this powered Nyeri's opinion of Abote, and led him to sponsor a conference in Morshi that led to the unification of several rebel groups under an umbrella organization, the Uganda National Liberation Front. The journalists Tony Avergan and Martha Honey stated that Mawanga attempted to recruit new rebels, but that his closeness to Abote discouraged suspicious locals from signing up. The mass uprising against Armin envisioned by Abote did not materialize. The TPDF moved its operating headquarters to Masaka, and it remained there until Entebbe was captured. Nyeria originally planned to halt his forces in Masaka and allow the Ugandan rebels to attack Kampala and overthrow Amin, as he feared that scenes of Tanzanian troops occupying the city would reflect poorly on his country's image abroad. However, Ugandan rebel forces did not have the strength to defeat the incoming Libyan units, so Nyeri decided to use the TPDF to take Kampala. Tanzanian leaders were also inclined to capture the city after Amin's announcement that the inhabitants of Masaka and Marara would face retaliation for welcoming the Tanzanian invasion. The successful formation of the UNLF organization also eased Tanzanian concerns about the aftermath of a seizure of the capital. Kampala was secured by the TPDF on the 11th of April. Combat operations in the country continued until 3 June, when Tanzanian forces reached the Sudanese border and eliminated the last resistance. The TPDF withdrew from Uganda in 1981. Chapter 4 Section 1 – Legacy Ugandan Lieutenant Colonel Abdu Kijul later said that the Ugandans' defeat at Masaka was critical in determining their later loss of the entire war. The town was left heavily damaged by the battle, and most of the population sought refuge in lodges in Kampala after the war. By 1980 only 6,000 residents remained in Masaka. The Masaka District Administrative Headquarters were relocated in a private residence. The Assistant District Commissioner estimated that it would cost $20 million to rebuild the town. Masaka was further damaged by fighting in 1985 during the Ugandan Bush War. As late as 2002 ruins from 1979 conflict were still visible, and some compromised buildings remained abandoned. By 2013 most of the damaged landmarks had either been replaced or were being rehabilitated. 
Records of municipal property were lost when the town hall was destroyed, and in lieu of the documentation of ownership businessmen privatized the public lands for their own use. Following a petition from the local government, in 2013 the Ministry of Lands returned 23 disputed properties to municipal control. Political scientist Daniel Aikson Brown wrote that Masaka's destruction was not in keeping with the proper conduct of war. When the Catholic Church considered canonizing Nyeria as a saint in 2016, Masaka District Chairman Jude Mbarbali declared his disapproval, accusing the Tanzanian president of ordering the leveling of Masaka and failing to help it rebuild.